Today on CTV News at 5, a fast-moving grass fire on the Blood Reserve has Lethbridge County in a state of emergency. Plus, family members identify a man found dead in Galt Gardens last night. And many score big in a city recycling event, but some of the items weren't supposed to be up for grabs. CTV News with Alicia Fieldberg. Hello. Both the city and county of Lethbridge have declared states of emergency as firefighters continue to battle a grass fire west of Lethbridge on the Blood Reserve. Firefighters from the city, county and Blood Reserve are now on the scene. The blaze started this morning west of Highway 509 and it has been spread by a gusty west wind. Smoke has been drifting across the reserve into parts of West Lethbridge. Residents in Coalhurst as well as those in Mountain Meadows and Township 822 are being evacuated. People are urged to stay away from the area and keep the roads clear so vehicles aren't blocking emergency crews. Officials say the smoke may also reduce visibility and create hazardous road conditions. Alberta Health Services has issued a precautionary smoke advisory for the city and county of Lethbridge. People sensitive to smoke are directed to stay indoors and keep your windows closed. We spoke to County Reeve Lauren Hickey a few minutes ago. The county has declared a state of emergency and maybe you can explain why you decided to take that step. Well, it's, it's a fire and it's moving rapidly in 85 kilometer an hour winds and we just want to make sure the safety of everybody's first in mind. So does that, what does that allow you to do that you, you felt was necessary? It allows you to, to, to make an evacuation order and to put it into place. It also allows you to get other resources you normally couldn't access without declaring a state of emergency. No, you said that it has crossed the river. Um, what's the state of the fire at this point in time? We're hoping to get a little better view from the air, but the, the smoke is so thick on the ground right now, we're not sure. It has crossed the river. It is a little south of the Animal Disease Research Institute. Uh, they're starting to make some fire breaks in uh, whatever ground they can, and hopefully they can hold the fire down in the river bottom. And that's uh, what you have a lot of heavy equipment uh, tasked right now, and maybe you can explain what you're trying to do there. I, I think they're just trying to plow some fire breaks so that the river, so that the fire can't run through the grass in the river bottom. What what are, what are residents doing, or are they all gone now? They're supposed to be going over to the Fritzik Center, and that's where the Red Cross is is uh, set up there. How many homes do you know? Uh, there's approximately 56 homes in uh, Mountain Meadows and I don't believe there's any homes at the Research Institute down there, just uh, staff and animals, but uh, I understand it has been evacuated. The Crossings Branch Library has also been evacuated. Several streets in West Lethbridge have been closed to prevent traffic congestion. That was one of the major issues identified by fire officials after a grass fire in November. Family members have identified a man found dead in Galt Gardens last night. EMS tried to revive an unresponsive 34-year-old man found lying on the bottom steps of the pergola. He was taken to hospital with head injuries where he later died. A cousin has identified the man as Justin Eaglechild of the Blood Reserve. She says he sometimes stayed with family or friends who live in North Lethbridge. Police are investigating but don't suspect foul play. A 28-year-old woman faces drug charges after trying to evade a weekend check stop. Picture Butte RCMP and Lethbridge RCMP were conducting a joint check stop on Highway 23 near Nobleford Friday night. Officers saw a vehicle turning away, so they stopped the driver. RCMP searched the vehicle and found more than five pounds of cannabis marijuana. The woman was arrested for possession for the purpose of trafficking and is scheduled to appear in Lethbridge Provincial Court. A teenage girl is facing charges after three teen boys were robbed at Knife Point in Medicine Hat early Sunday morning. Police say the boys were walking downtown when a 15-year-old girl approached them asking for cigarettes and money. When they didn't give her any, the girl pulled a knife. No one was hurt, but the girl stole their money. Police arrested and charged her with robbery, attempted robbery, assault with a weapon and possession of a dangerous weapon. A fraud investigation involving forged contracts is underway in the East Kootenai. A Cranbrook businesswoman found she was under contract with a natural gas provider and locked into a price double the market value. The troubling part? She never signed a contract. Kimberly Davidson reports. Kathy Simon has been operating her health food store in Cranbrook, Kathy's Kitchen, for 28 years. She admits she usually pays her utility bills without much scrutiny, but last winter, her natural gas bill caught her attention. 
So when I looked at my bill and it was over $300, I went, yike, what happened here? When she examined her Fortis bill, she saw a third-party marketer, Active Energy, was listed as her natural gas provider. When she called the company to find out why, she was told they had a contract signed by her. They emailed me a copy of the contract, the supposed contract, and when I printed it off, lo and behold, it wasn't my signature. Simon went to the police. After an extensive investigation, they found 25 forged active energy contracts in Kimberley and Cranbrook and expect there are dozens more. We have sent out uh, just under 90 uh, letters to the local business owners of, uh, in Kimberley and Cranbrook asking them to uh, review their utilities bill and if they notice any irregularities or anything uh, suspicious to give us a call. The RCMP have narrowed in on two suspects they are building cases against to pursue fraud charges. They were subcontractors uh, with Active Energy and uh, working on commission. They were not employees of either Fortis, uh, BC or Active Energy. I contacted Active Energy, but representatives of the Ontario-based company declined to comment because the case of the forged contracts is still under investigation. The BC Utilities Commission is also looking into the fraudulent contracts and is still determining a course of action. As for Simon, her contract with Active Energy has been cancelled and her money has been returned. But she is advising everyone in BC to take a closer look at their natural gas bills to see if they too have been burned. Kimberly Davidson, CTV News, Cranbrook. And Dory's in with the weather, and there's some wild winds out there, and it feels like it's cooling down. Are we done with those summer temperatures, Dory? Not really, uh, Alicia. We're looking at a couple of days of a cool down and then we start to warm back up into the mid to possibly the high 20s towards the uh, end of the work week. And the winds, though, are going to continue to be with us tonight. Some areas will be dealing with them tomorrow. Even as far north as Red Deer, that doesn't tend to get as windy as we do here in the south, had gusts today of 87 kilometers per hour. So it's a big low pressure center. I'll show you all the satellite information when we get into the weather. Story. The old saying, one man's trash is another's treasure, was the driving force behind Lethbridge's first reused rendezvous. I like the cane backs. Kind of funky. They are. People searched for hidden gems in yards throughout the city this weekend. The Waste and Recycling Department encouraged res residents to place items they don't want, but think someone else could use in, their fr in front of their house and mark them free. All of the items were up for grabs for the first person to pick them up. This man scored a barbecue, and this family got a dining room set. One student even got a car. The event aims to reduce the amount of large items that end up in the dump. Brilliant um, to recycle. This, this is an awesome idea. It's great not to fill up the landfill with this kind of stuff. It's usable. Let's keep using it. I think it's pretty good. It's going to save the lower income people to have opportunities maybe to get some things that they don't have. Some residents tell CTV they had items taken from their front lawn that didn't have a free sign on them, specifically van seats. If you picked up something without a sign, you're encouraged to return it to the homeowner. The Canadian Border Services Agency isn't saying what was in a package that prompted closure of the border for more than five hours Friday. The border was closed during the lunch hour on Friday. It was reopened at 6 that evening after members of the Lethbridge Regional Police Explosive Unit were able to determine the package didn't contain explosives. Border officials say all security incidents are taken seriously and their emergency response plan was set into motion after a suspicious package was delivered to the port by a courier. Cross-border traffic was rerouted through Del Bonita and Carway. Several streets in Coots were closed to traffic, but local residents weren't affected. It's rather uh, be safe than sorry, as I was saying, and it's kind of nice to know that they give us a heads up and let us know that something's going on and to be careful. A border services agency spokesperson says it's not likely they'll release the information on what was in the package. Changes to the province's drinking and driving legislation is one of the reasons behind a new business in Lethbridge. Lifesavers Designated Driving started operating out of the city a week ago. The company charges a flat fee to get you and your car home safely after a night of drinking. Stiffer penalties for drinking and driving were introduced September 1st. The business owners say they wanted to provide a safe, reliable option for those planning on hitting the town. 
The cost of the service is $35, and for right now, rides are only available within the city limits. They'll do, they'll do all, they also offer rides during the day. You can find more information on their website at lifesavers.com. Organizers of a World Suicide Prevention Day in Lethbridge say everyone plays an important role in preventing suicide. More than half, of, half a dozen speakers presented at a conference organized by the Lethbridge Library today. Among, among them, a youth outreach coordinator, a survivor, and a parent of a child that committed suicide. The group covered topics like cyberbullying, Aboriginal youth, and depression. Organizers say it's important people know and recognize the warning signs of suicide. People don't need to be embarrassed about this. It doesn't need to be a hidden secret. Uh, if we talk about it and offer help to people, they will get better help and there will be more survivors. It was so important that our family heal in as healthy a way as we could. And so we used a lot of the resources with the counseling, um, the support groups offered through Lethbridge Services for survivors of suicide. And I have wanted other parents to feel they're not alone because it is a tough journey. Alberta has the, high, the fourth highest suicide rate among Canadian provinces with more than 400 deaths reported each year. A Lethbridge organization is bringing awareness to fetal alcohol syndrome disorder. The South Alberta FASD Services Network hosted an event in Galt Gardens on Sunday. Throughout the afternoon, parents and individuals talked about the disorder and how it's impacted their lives. International Awareness Day is held each year on the ninth day of the ninth month to remind women that they should abstain from alcohol during the nine months of pregnancy. Officials with the Service Network say it's important for women to realize the effect alcohol can have on their unborn children. Our message is, is no alcohol, no safe amount, no safe time, no safe kind. But one of the things that we're starting to do is we're starting to ask women who are planning on conceiving not to consume alcohol at that time either. Because you can be pregnant, not know, and still consuming alcohol. And you can do damage to your fetus before you know you're pregnant. Over 36,000 Albertans are living with FASD. Dozens of people laced up their runners for the Parkinson Superwalk in Lethbridge this weekend. 70 walkers and 15 volunteers took part in the event at Indian Battle Park Saturday morning. The annual walk is designed to raise the profile of Parkinson disease and bring in funds to help keep the local office open. Proceeds are also, using, are also used to help ongoing research to find a cure for the progressively debilitating neurological disease. It's something that sort of flies under the radar, so we want to make it uh, easier for them to, pardon the term, come out of the closet and tell people about Parkinson's disease. There's nothing wrong with admitting that you have it and we want to help you with information that, you know, will better your life. This year's event raised almost $14,000 in Lethbridge. The Superwalk was one of eight taking place across the province. And now let's take a look at the markets.